<sighs> so cool. What are you doing, Patrick? Huh. Just using my new free air conditioning. What? Free air conditioning? That's right. Okay, maybe it's not quite ready yet. But we'll tell you all about it. I'm Patrick. And I'm Lorana. Welcome to Hole in the Ground. We are well on our way to completing our Earthship home in beautiful Idaho. Hello! So, you might remember that last year we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to get the dirt um, moist enough to use. Um, even though it's only May, it's already getting too dry to use just like this. So, um, we found a solution that's working really well for this season. So, um, Patrick made this little water wagon out of a tote and just a little tiny trailer um, that we tow around with our Chevy Bolt. Um, and then we have this pump here and Patrick made this little battery bank inside an ammo can which is hilarious. Um, anyway, so with this pump hooked up, um, what we can do is just spray water onto the dirt which saves us from having to um, spend time putting it into a concrete mixer uh, and we'll show you in just a little bit how we've been using the tractor and the hose together to make this work this time. Okay here we go so we'll turn on the valve for the water and then we turn on the pump and I'm doing a voiceover because this part gets really noisy between the pump and the tractor. So I'll spray down the dirt initially while I wait for Mr. Tractor Driver Patrick to come by. Patrick will pick up dirt and turn it over, I don't know, between like five to seven times depending on how dry the dirt is. Um, and as he's doing that, I'm just making sure that I spray down any dry bits. This does take a little bit of time still, but this was like maybe five minutes and it gets us like two to three tractor loads of dirt that has a good moisture level. Um, it's also really nice because it saves a lot of the physical energy that we were spending last summer loading dirt and water into a concrete mixer and then unloading it again. So um, overall, I think this system is working a lot better than even what we had figured out last summer. So we're really glad for that. And this is what that dirt looks like. So now it's um, got enough moisture in it to actually compact nicely. In case you're wondering, we've got a two-inch uh, tow hitch. It's rated for something outrageous, like 3,500 pounds, way more than we'd ever tow with this car. But um, and then a wiring kit that I installed myself required a little bit of disassembly. I had to pull this off and some other things to get it all wired in. But honestly, it works great. Uh, we've towed with this car a bunch, actually. Um, not just with this trailer, but with like a little U-Haul trailer. We've towed, you know, trailer from uh, we towed that. You haul trailer from well about a thousand miles to to get to where we are now. So um, this is our little construction car, and it works freaking awesome. It's mad. We have finished five courses of tires now, which means that we are halfway through the tire wall. We had originally thought we would only need 9 courses, but at this point we are thinking we'll actually need 10 courses to make sure the front of the house is tall enough to fit our windows. So far we have used 397 tires, just shy of 400. Course 1 used 83, Course 2 used 81, Course 3 used 78, Course 4 used 77, and Course 5 used 78. What is crazy is that 233 of those tires we have filled just in the last six weeks. 
We've got our system down, and while we are always making small adjustments, it's nice to feel a little less clueless, at least for this specific part of the project. When conditions are right and the tires are prepped and screwed into place, we can fill them at a rate of about 10 minutes per tire. At this point, we are doing between 10 and 15 tires every time we go up, which is a huge improvement from our early days where we're doing four tires in one session felt like the upper limit. 10 minutes per tire doesn't totally account for the time that we're using to prepare and screw the tires into place, but I think it's still a nice metric to have for how long it takes to actually fill and tamp the tire. We noticed a new challenge when we were working on a second course of tires before backfilling. Because the tires were farther from the ground, Patrick had to hold the tamper up higher the entire time, which taxed his arms a lot more and made it hard to use the tamper for as long. So we figured out that if we just slapped some boards over a few extra tires, we could make a platform that would put Patrick at basically the same height as if there were backfill behind the previous course. We've been using these random boards for all sorts of things. All right, so here's the plan for the culvert pipes. Well, they're not culvert pipes, but you know, air conditioning pipes, I guess. Um, so we've got our boxes doubled up and basically just slip right through. We've got a slope, probably go with, I'll double check, but go with something like the standard plumbing slope quarter inch per foot of drop just so that, you know, no water will run in. Um, but yeah, basically this is 25 feet. We'll have another box there and the slope of the house will essentially come to about there. Hello. I'm going to show you around our installed cooling tubes. Here they all are. You can see that there's two per um, box or area, and I'll tell you why. Most airships tend to use 10 to 12 inch steel culvert pipe uh, for the cooling tubes, the earth cooling tubes. Um, but those are expensive and kind of hard to get, but mostly expensive. So what we found instead was uh, these these are six inch mainline irrigation pipes um, that someone locally was selling perks of living in an agriculturally focused area i suppose anyways um so we found these six inch mainline pipes that a guy on facebook marketplace was selling um got them for like a third of the price of i mean the, the steel culverts our reasoning behind this is that uh doing some calculations Basically, two six-inch pipes uh, has the same, I guess, amount of metal touching the earth as one, like, ten-inch culver pipe, essentially. Um, so we figured being a, a smaller amount of air would actually, you know, a smaller amount of volume inside would actually help cool them down um, just as well or maybe even a little bit easier. Um, but the amount, of, the amount of metal touching the earth and getting cooled by the earth is basically the same by doubling up these two six inch pipes. As you can kind of see, there's a little bit of a slope to them. Um, basically something along the lines of quarter inch per foot, uh, just standard plumbing slope. Um, it's what most of our ships do. And that way, you know, any moisture or whatever that, that condensation, anything like that that may collect will just run right out, which will be nice. And also because it's not, like that corrugated culvert pipe, um, water shouldn't be getting stuck into the in those little pockets. Um, so hopefully that will, you know, help keep moisture uh, squared away. Also, um, an important thing is that uh, we're gonna kind of grind these down, trim these down flush with the box, and then we'll put some uh, fine metal mesh over these. Um, both on the outside as well as on the inside of the house um, and that way it uh, just ensures that you know no rodents or mice or dirt or debris or anything like that can get in. We also kind of spooged it with spray foam um, just to kind of fill in the gaps between the pipe and these little boxes that we built um, for you know whatever to keep dirt out, keep moisture out, um, keep uh, you know, temperature differences in check. And so we'll do this kind of filming on both sides of the boxes. After finishing course five of the tires, it was time for another backfill day. 
We've decided to backfill after every two courses of tires, which is why we needed that platform that we just showed you earlier. Our dirt contractor's equipment moves a bit more earth than our tiny tractor. As he was backfilling, Patrick and I were using shovels to make sure we got dirt in between the tires. I was a little worried about how the cooling pipes would hold up with the compaction, but they did just fine. They were not smooshed. Now that the earth bank is this high and we have our cooling pipes in place, we're going to have to start building in more of a slope to the earth bank. Because right now it's like a little cliff, and it's getting kind of difficult to get up to the back of the tire wall. Part of what we also have to figure out is when to start wrapping the vapor barrier back up to form the envelope behind the home. Thank you. 